The pandemic continues, and in the past week, the NBA resumed play in the bubble, while the MLB both resumed and suspended play. The NFL is still figuring out how it will proceed as their season is scheduled to resume in a little over a month. While viewers and fans are thirsty for sports, and specifically a return to live sports, Netflix brings us its brand of football in the latest season of Last Chance U, a documentary series that chronicles the lives of young men taking, in most cases, their final shot at a career in football. I'm Ronald Young Jr., and I'm on the couch. This is Ronald, and I am on the couch after watching Last Chance You uh, on Netflix. Last Chance You, produced by Joel Abraccio, Adam Leibowitz, Don Ostroff, Adam Ridley, Lucas Smith, James D. Stern, and Greg Whiteley. Uh, Last Chance You again. It's on Netflix, and it is a show about junior colleges and their football programs, and specifically... Uh, the first season um, focuses on a school called East Mississippi Community College. And East Mississippi is was the number one school in the country at that time, of course, in in junior college football, in the junior college program. And they are known for taking in recruits that are basically on their last legs from division one uh, football programs. So for those of you that don't know much about sports, uh, division one football programs are basically the top tier of football that you see when you hear college football, that's what folks are talking about. And that is the feeder into the NFL. So when you see those, those teams that are ranked and you see people going crazy talking about, yeah, Virginia tech, all that stuff. Those are D one schools that you're typically hearing people talk about. There's a lot of D two and D three programs that you hear about, but those are, are not, you know, the considered the highest level of collegiate football. With that being said, Juco would be basically the bottom rung of collegiate football, but it is still a recruiting area. It's above high school, but it's still a recruiting area for a lot of D one schools that are looking for talent as they're continuing to compete throughout the seasons. So what last chance you does is it follows one team over the course of a full season. And it tells you all the little stories going on in these teams. It tells you about the players, how they got there, you know, why they're not playing at a D one school, why they didn't go to this college, all these things. And there's a litany of stories that come through. Um, You know, some of them are just um, not very good students. They didn't do well in school, like academically, but they were very talented on the field or some of them went and started out of college and then um, failed out of the program or got into drug trouble or got did some sort of action or something that got them put out of college. And this is the only way that they could continue their football careers. So the premise of Last Chance U is that they're going to go play at this school, um, kind of whip themselves back into shape and then turn around and go back to D1 schools. That's, that's the big hook of this. The smaller hook is that there's people that are just going to JUCO, want to keep playing football, and this is the only place that they can play. So there's a, there's a hodgepodge uh, of uh, students that are going to play football at junior colleges. Um, there's a, and there's a, I'm sorry, a hodgepodge of reasons that students go and play football at junior colleges. Uh, so the first season, like I said, follows the first and second seasons were at East Mississippi Community College and they were featuring coach Buddy Stevens. The third and fourth seasons were at Independence Community College in Kansas and they were featuring coach Jason Brown. And this fifth season, which I just finished watching, uh, was at Laney Community College in Oakland, California, featuring coach John Beam. I like this show. This is a great show and this is a great a great show for everyone. This is a great show for people who 
love sports. And this is for a great show for people who don't care so much about sports. The sports aspect is the big hook. It is the largest part of the show. It is, hey, this is a football team. Look what this football team is going for, going through. But the interesting thing about Last Chance U is it's as much a story about wealth inequality, the sports industrial complex, uh, urban development and decay, gentrification, toxic masculinity, and what America is as much as it is a show about football. All of those things I mentioned are tackled in various ways throughout every single season of this show. And depending on where they are, it's a bigger or smaller portion of the story. They first, they'll, they'll, and they start by peeling back layers. Each episode, you get a little bit of each player and you'll find out about them on the field. You'll find about them in the classroom. And then in uh, some cases, the film crews will go back with them back to their homes and they'll interview their parents and they'll interview their uh, high school coaches, all that stuff. And you'll get a full picture of this player. And, you know, oftentimes when we watch sports, we see a player and we're just like, oh, yeah, go sports ball team catching that ball. Yeah, I like that. But w- what this show does is give you an opportunity to see a human, a whole human perform. I mean, at, at a great level, even though it's a junior college, they're just out there performing on the field. And, you know, all of these little things about them. So every every bit of their motivation um, and I think that's important because sometimes as sports fans, when we watch games, we watch these games and we say, man, he didn't catch that ball. Oh, man, he's having a rough game. Oh, man, all these things are going wrong. And while every episode doesn't directly tie the struggles of the player um, in life to the struggles on the field, it kind of gives you this different different part of, uh, side of empathy and sympathy with these folks because you're watching them. You're like, man, I know this guy's whole life. This isn't just some guy. I don't, it's not like I don't know anything about this dude. It's almost like watching your friends play football and say, man, I really hope Travis catches that ball, man. Oh man, I want Travis to do well. There's a different sort of investment that comes with watching this show because you, you, you end up caring so much and rooting for, and sometimes against uh, most of the characters and they're not characters, they're humans uh, in this show, but I'm using characters just as, you know, it's a show. Uh, So, but it's the little stories that they end up stumbling upon. So this season they talked, they were in Oakland. And so they did a lot of talk about gentrification and did an excellent job of tying how gentrification and wealth inequality in Oakland and how the change in Silicon Valley directly affects the players that are playing on this team and what that means for their daily lives, for their daily commutes, what that means they have to sacrifice in order to play football at a junior college program. Because what a lot of people don't know is that D1 programs get a lot of money, a lot of perks, all those things. Those same perks come out of (laughs) there's some perks that exist at a junior college level, but they're they're not uh, tangible perks. Uh, They're not as tangible as at a D1 level. Um, and, And the show kind of addresses more exactly what I'm talking about there. So the lens is as much on the community uh, that the college is in as much as it's on the community college and the football program at these community colleges. So for people that don't like sports, if you just want to see shows about, you know, and, and it becomes more than just uh just about football, because a lot of sports fans go watch, watch the game, enjoy the game, feel the emotions of the game. I feel like for a non-sports fan, what this does is sit you down on the couch Hold your hand and says, okay, um, here is Frank. Frank uh, has a daughter and Frank went to University of Miami, but he got into some trouble there. And now he goes to Independence Community College. And now that he's at Independence Community College, he's been struggling um, because he doesn't do so well in his English classes, in, in his English classes. So here's Frank interacting with his teacher. And then they'll they'll cut that up with Frank going to practice, Frank getting yelled at by his coaches, Frank performing really well on the football field. And they'd be like, Frank's a good player, but he's just such a knucklehead. So you get this complete picture of this person and then every episode they show at least one game and not the whole game but they chop it up and make it very dramatic which for me is the best kind of football to watch i don't care about any of that other stuff i love watching dramatic nfl films that style of football so watching it you just you're so invested in like is frank gonna catch this ball and that makes it the stakes it makes it higher so f- for those of you that like real housewives that like um a lot of reality television any of the bravo stuff this is a good feeder for you <laughs> (laughs) (laughs) 
into, into sports. I mean, I don't, and I don't think this is going to push any of you guys over the line completely of actually becoming a sports fan, but you will definitely be a fan of this show. And right here in this pandemic, um, the pandemic affects this latest season of Last Chance You in a very unique way, a very unique way. So, oh, uh, and and you see that as the uh, show was coming to a close, I was just like, oh my god, oh that's pandemic related. Oh my goodness, and it just it gives it such a real edge, and it reminds you that these are players that are living in a real world. Um, but all of these, all of these uh, little issues are tackled there. They don't just interview the players, they interview the players, they interview the coaches. They're looking at the coaches' families. They're looking at the players' families. They're going and talking to local police officers, local business people, the mayors of these towns, all of these different players, just random people at the coffee shop. And they're giving you such a complete picture of the towns that these schools are in what the sports industrial complex is, what it does to these students, what it does to the people around them, how we place our values as Americans. I think, I mean, all of these parts uh, make this a wonderful show. You will get upset. There's a lot of reasons you'll get upset. I mean, the toxic masculinity, if you want an example of what that looks like, uh, you can watch this show and very quickly you'll see it's it's very much uh, it, it becomes, oh, okay, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what it is. So it's, Oh, uh, watching this show, it really took me on a journey. I really enjoyed it. I enjoy I enjoy this type of show generally, but I really enjoy this show specifically. I think sometimes um the football in this show actually distracts from what I think are the stronger storylines, but the football is still very compelling. If there's anybody who's been like looking for a show to watch during the pandemic, you have five seasons of this show, and I think there are eight episodes per season. So you have about 40 episodes. If I did that math correctly, you have about 40 episodes of this show to watch through. And it's it's great because every two seasons, they switch to a different school. So you'll be able to watch three different schools in three different seasons. And because it's very difficult, it's not it's it's easy to Google the results. But because uh, junior college football results are not readily available to people, it's very easy to watch this and not know the outcome and understand, oh, my God. Are they going to win this game? How this is going to affect them? What happens to these, these people's future? All of that, all of that stuff will just come into play and be in your mind uh, while watching this. It's it's a fantastic show. I, I really like it. Um, I give it a full four stars of five stars. And I think it's OK for your kids. There's a lot of swearing um, and it's it's sports swearing. So it it depends on. I guess what your children are used to hearing, what you're, what you allow them to hear, that type of thing. But I don't think that this is going to be anything that's going to uh, uh, corrupt your child, especially if they're already playing sports. <laughs> they're already playing sports. They've definitely already heard some of the language that's used uh, in these uh, in this show. But yeah, this show is it's a great show. Uh, four of five stars would recommend. Yeah, and with that. Leaving the Theater is a production of Oh, It's Big Ron Studios. Theme music by the mysterious Breakmaster Cylinder. To find out more about this show and other Oh, It's Big Ron Studios shows, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Oh, It's Big Ron. That's at O-H-I-T-S-B-I-G-R-O-N. If you like this show, check out our sister show, Time Well Spent. Leaving the Theater will be back soon, but until then, I'll be here on the couch.